Avery Sports Show, and I've over my history of Avery Sports Show, I've had over 300 guests, over 800 episodes have been aired. But I've never interviewed a filmmaker before, mm. much less one who's done a movie on history and feature of black hockey. The black men of the community could not play hockey with the white hockey teams in the area; they were just segregated. We've got some season ticket holders that are complaining about bringing you here. I had to injure everything. All the name calling, the N word, I heard it all. He got death threats. You're playing the white man's game. You know that you can compete with the best, but you're the wrong color. For 12 years, we've been coming to hockey, and he's only the second one we've ever seen. Was there a discrimination issue, or was it simply the fact that he was too proud to go to the minor leagues? And you can find good arguments on both sides. There was racial slurs coming from every corner. The only way to get back at him is to win. Race, like so many other things, serve as a distraction. And the minute you allow it to distract you, you'll never reach your destination. It doesn't matter what color you are. If you want to do something, you go and do it. And don't let anybody tell you you can't do that. Why wouldn't you play basketball? Or why wouldn't you play football? And I'm like, why can't I play hockey? What's wrong with it? Kwame Mason joins me, the director, the narrator, the host, everything really for Sola Nice, past, present, and future. How are you doing? Welcome I'm to the Sports Show. Thank you for having me, my friend. I appreciate this. I know your movie, you mentioned in articles and in the film, it took you three years from start to finish, mm -hmm. in between interviews, editing, hosting. How good did it feel to see the movie finally be on a big screen in Edmonton at their film festival? It was uh, it was surreal for, for the most part, and it was um, it was one of those things in life, I, a feeling that I think everybody should have at, one, at least once. You traveled to Edmonton, the States, all over Ontario getting yeah. footage interviews. Do you think it would take three years from start to finish when you first began? It actually, you know, in my ignorance, probably thought it should have taken a lot less of time. But it's funny how certain things happen. You know, you got that cliche of everything was supposed to happen in its own time. And I feel that the time that it took for, for me to do the film, I was supposed to take that time. It couldn't have been done any shorter or any longer because, you know, um, even when we were editing, during that time is when I got to interview Don Cherry. So if I had it done, if it had taken two years or if it had taken a year and a half, I wouldn't have had Don Cherry. Is it overwhelming to have so many names in the hockey world saying I love it? Like, how does that feel to have the whole hockey world come together and say this movie is wonderful? We didn't know these things about black hockey history yeah. or the future or where the game is going in the inner cities in America. It's really an honor because, you know, these that's what they do for a living. It's all about hockey. And to be able to have some people say that are in yeah. hockey to say they didn't know this history is something that is satisfying for me because when I got the idea to do this film, that was one of the things that set me off was when I learned about the Colored Hockey League in Nova Scotia. I didn't know about that. So I thought if I didn't know about this history, how many people in Canada don't know about this history? So, you know, for them to recognize that is really, it's really powerful. Right. And you mentioned the Colored Hockey League, which is a league which was in Nova Scotia, all black league from the 1890s to the 1910s before they were forced to fold. Mm. What was that like discovering that there was a league in Nova Scotia with all black and mm. it was a league that had innovations. It was a league where goalies could make a save on their knees. Mm. And it was more exciting. What was it like to learn that it had been kind of repressed and that the NHL had really given it no credit for the rules that they brought in mm. to the modern game? It was interesting because, you know, one of the things that you know, as um, you know, if you're in sports and you know your and just history, you know, you hear about the Harlem Globetrotters or the Rents or um, you know the Negro Baseball League, but there's no mention of the Colored Hockey League. And what's really interesting is, you know, from a Canadian versus an American perspective, Americans celebrate their history more so than we do as Canadians. Mm -hmm. 
but um, just learning about this color hockey, hockey league gave me a, a sense of pride in the fact that as far as organized sports goes, you know, for blacks, the colored hockey league was the first organized sport for blacks. Not the ba not the Negro baseball league, not the Hollywood draw. We here in Canada organized something ourselves. So um, it, it 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 was it was. It was interesting, you know, sitting and talking to people that had these his that knew about this, you know, and um, you know, discovering photographs or just like seeing some news articles from back then, and you know, hearing about the slap shot and you know the butterfly style goaltending, which is now incorporated in the in, in the NHL and in hockey all over the world. It's beautiful to know that uh, you know our peoples are the ones who set that off. Absolutely, you know. In your film, you talk about how there was accounts of the Black League being more exciting, the color mm -hmm. hockey league was more exciting than the white leagues. What is it about hockey do you think that just hates the fact that players who are of color are a little bit more, they're rash and saying, why does hockey repress the fact that black players like to have fun in the game? Do you think? Well, I think, I don't know if it's just the black players, I think it's just this, this culture of hockey where they're very, um, it's very old school and, you know, I mean, I think, you know, that is something cultural, like, you know, blacks, whatever we do, it's got some sort of swag about it. We got a little bit of style of pizzazz about whatever <laughs> we do, and it be it in sports, be it in, in um, fashion, you know, whatever it is, we come with this sort of flair. We're not boring. <laughs> yeah, we're not, yeah, you know, and I mean, not to say that theirs is boring, but that's just how, you know, that's, you know, when it comes to dancing, we've got, that's our style, exactly. you know? So you equate that to a sports and you see it in basketball, you see it in football, you even see it in baseball. And you see it not only with the black players in basketball, baseball, football, you see it with the white players too because that's the culture. So in hockey, the, the culture is, you know, when you score, you act like you've, done, you've been there before. So you don't really celebrate and you don't go over the top. And this is something that's been ingrained in their mindset from you know, from when, you know, the inception of the game or organized in, in the NHL, there's just a certain, you know, certain mandate, this, this is how we play the game. So now you look at the new generation, these kids, these kids, you know, they've got a lot more pizzazz, a lot more style, and a lot more energy out there. So, you know, um, I think as that grows and the game grows and the audience grows, you're going to see a lot more guys like PKs and uh, Alexander Ovechkins that like to celebrate and of show the love of, of the game and their energy. So, you know, the old guard is there and, and you know, they set their rules and some of them are good. Some of them are kind of like, okay, listen, old man, let's, let's move, mm -hmm. let's keep it moving. But, um, you know, I think the kids will continue to have fun. And it's gonna be to a point where, you know, they're, they're, there's nothing they're gonna be able to do about it, you know? Once the numbers start to grow and that energy starts to grow, then they're gonna have to um, either get with it or be left in the dust.